Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at the first problem that we'll solve using the method of variation of parameters. Now we have some steps over on the side here. Step one is always to find your complementary solution, which you need from that y1 and y2 to apply the variation of parameters formulas here. Finding the particular solution with variation of parameters is somewhat straightforward. We have our form for the particular solution, a function u1 times y1, and another function u2 times y2, and we have simple formulas for u1 and u2 in terms of y1, y2, the Ronskian of your two solutions, y1 and y2, and also the non-zero right-hand side, g of x. So let's get to the first step solving for the complementary solution. All right, we're going to solve the homogeneous ODE where the right-hand side is zero. All right, and you only have three possibilities here, distinct real roots, a repeated real root, or complex roots. All three of them come from the characteristic equation, which is very easy to get from here. Convert, you should get r squared plus 4r plus 3 equals 0. And it looks like that factors. Looks like we can write that as r plus 3 times r plus 1. So we get as our characteristic roots negative 3 and negative 1. All right, we can write down our complementary solution. It's a linear combination of e to the rx for each value of r. So we'll write it as c1 times e to the negative 3x, and then plus c2 times e to the negative x. What we need to extract from this is what we're identifying as our y1 and y2. So we'll say y1 is e to the negative 3x, and our y2 is e to the negative x. All right, that's pretty straightforward. I always like to immediately, at least when using variation of parameters, I like to immediately calculate the Ronskian of y1 and y2. And I like to set that up as first a two by two determinant. So we have in the first row, y1 and y2, e to the negative three x and then e to the negative x. And in the row below, their derivatives, which we can get very easily with the chain rule. So negative three, e to the negative three x, and then differentiate, you'll get negative e to the negative x. And now we calculate this two by two determinant. Notice when you multiply here, you're multiplying terms that are base e, you can add the exponents. And it looks like here, if I add my exponents, I'm gonna get e to the negative four x's. So multiply here, be careful with your negative. Looks like we get negative e to negative four x. The determinant says we subtract this product, we're subtracting a negative, we can write that really as plus 3, and again, multiplying here, you get e to negative 4x, and it looks like we can simplify that very nicely, looks like this comes out to give 2 times e to the negative 4x, so that's nice, we have our Ronskian. Let's just write that. That equals 2 times e to the negative 4x. And the only other term we need to apply your integral formulas for u1 and u2 is the non-zero right-hand side, g of x, which is x times e to the x. So let's write that right here.
and we have everything we need. Y1 and Y2, the Ronskian and G of X. We're just gonna plug those in and evaluate those integrals. All right, we now have everything that we need to apply our integral formulas for U1 and U2. So let's plug everything in and first find what U1 of X is. All right, we have that as the integral of negative y2, so negative e to the negative x, and that multiplies g of x. And then we divide by the Ronskian 2 times e to the negative 4x. Now, this looks brutal if you leave it as is to integrate, but it simplifies. Notice in the numerator, e to the negative x times e to the x, that cancels out e to the zero, one. And then you have a negative exponential in your denominator, which flips, looks like this simplifies to negative one half. We have that factor of x, but now times e to the four x. All right. That should be a very straightforward integration by parts. So let's do some of the work. We'll choose our u as negative one half x, dv as e to the four x. Differentiate, you'll get negative one half dx. Integrate, use your one over a shortcut. V comes out to one over four. e to the 4x, and now we can apply our integration by parts formula. We'll get uv as negative 1 eighth x times e to the 4x, and let's shortcut some of our work here. We're gonna have minus the integral of v du. Notice there's a minus. So minus a negative, that'll become plus. We have a one fourth times a one half, that's one over eight. But when you integrate e to the four x, you'll get another one fourth, one over eight times one over four, that should be one over 32, e to the four x. All right, and technically when we're finding an antiderivative, we put the plus c, but we account for the constants in our complementary solution, so you really don't need that plus c here. All right, so that takes care of u1. Let's go ahead to u2. And that's gonna be very similar, but definitely expect that your work here will simplify to a different integral. All right, so what does our formula say? We get now y1, notice there's no negative there, so our y1 is e to the negative 3x times g of x, so times x e to the x. We divide by the Ronskian, 2 times e to the negative 4x, and that's what we integrate. This should simplify a little bit. We have a lot of exponential terms, Let's start in the numerator, e to the negative 3x times e to the x, e to the negative 2x. This e to the negative 4x can flip up. e to the 4x times e to the negative 2x becomes e to the positive 2x. So it looks like we get here one over two times x. Don't forget about that x coming from g of x but this is now times e to the 2x. And the work is a very similar integration by parts, but some factors are different. Notice we have e to the 2x here, but e to the 4x. So let's go through it just to make sure we account for all the factors. du will go with 1 half x, dv, e to the 2x. You know what to do, differentiate, du, 
is again one half dx. And if you got this factor of one fourth correct earlier, here we get a similar one over two factor times e to the two x. Apply your integration by parts formula, uv, so you get one fourth x e to the two x. And now minus the integral of v du, notice there's no extra negatives in v or du, so this will be negative. We have a half times a half, that's one over four, but when you integrate e to the two x, you get another one over two factor, or another factor of a half. So we have one fourth times a half, that should be minus one eighth e to the two x. All right, those are our expressions for u1 and u2, but if you were to plug them in directly here, you're gonna get a big mess. Now, what I will say, looking back to the method of undetermined coefficients, we should expect, based off of g of x here, we should expect a particular solution applying the method of undetermined coefficients, that's a degree one polynomial. So something of the form ax plus b times e to the x. Now we are not applying undetermined coefficients here, but we should expect a particular solution that looks like that. We have some rather complicated looking expressions for u1 and u2 u1 and u2 get multiplied by y1 and y2, and it's not at all obvious that all these terms simplify to something like that. Well, let's go ahead and simplify u1 and u2 and plug it all in, and we should find that we get a particular solution that does have a form like that. Once you have your expressions for u1 and u2 of x, it's just a matter of plugging everything back in to this general form for the particular solution from variation of parameters. Now, I want to simplify some of the work for you and give you some little tips and tricks that will be popping up a lot. Notice the terms here in each u1 and u2, they have like terms, the exponentials. So before plugging everything directly in here, Let's see if we can simplify u1 and u2 first. So we can factor out from u1 e to the 4x, and we'll get in parentheses negative 1 eighth x plus 1 over 32, and that'll be times e to the 4x. And in u2 of x, we can factor out e to the 2x. Looks like we can write that as one fourth x minus one eighth. All right, and that's all multiplying e to the two x. Now, using these simplified forms, the work will be a lot easier when we plug everything in here to this form for yp. So let's go ahead and do that. And what Variation parameter says you get for a particular solution is u1 times y1, so negative one over eight x plus one over 32 e to the four x. That's u1 of x, but we multiply by y1 e to the negative three x. Now you can probably see where we're gonna get in our particular solution, e to the x terms, like we mentioned, if you would have applied undetermined coefficients, e to the four x times e to the negative three x, that just simplifies to e to the x. Let's go ahead and include the u two times y two term. 
So we have u2 of x here, 1 over 4x minus 1 over 8 times e to the 2x, but that gets multiplied by y2, which is e to the negative x. And again, notice these exponentials simplify to e to the x. So this seems to be falling into place, just factoring out there made a lot of difference here. So if we go ahead and simplify this, let me just rewrite this. Negative 1 over 8x plus 1 over 32 e to the x. And then plus a similar term e to the x at the end, but different fractions inside. 1 over 4x minus 1 over 8 e to the x. And if we factor e to the x out from both these terms, looks like we have some like terms. Looks like here we have like terms x in the parentheses. If you're careful with fractions, negative 1 eighth plus 1 fourth, that'll become positive 1 over 8. And if you're also careful with fractions, we have like terms that are just the constants, 1 over 32 minus 1 over 8. That'll come out to negative 3 over 32. And that is multiplying e to the x. And that exactly fits the form of what we would have expected if we applied undetermined coefficients. We have a degree 1 polynomial times e to the x which is exactly what g of x would lead you to. This g of x would lead you to try yp as ax plus b times e to the x. And as a nice follow-up to this, if you're trying to become an excellent student, go ahead and apply undetermined coefficients here. And what I can tell you is your a, the quantity multiplying x, if you were to apply undetermined coefficients, you'll find a should be 1 over 8, and your b, or constant term, should be negative 3 over 32. It's a fair amount of work, pretty equally distributed. Undetermined coefficients gives you a lot of algebra, variation of parameters, tricky integrals, but integration by parts, that was no problem. So let's just write down our full solution to this differential equation. Our full solution is always the complementary solution plus the particular solution. Here we have the parts of our complementary solution. C1 times e to the negative 3x plus C2 times e to the negative x. And we add to that our particular solution that we found with variation of parameters. So plus 1 over 8, x minus 3 over 32, e to the x. And there we have it. The method of variation of parameters, very straightforward. You have nice formulas that you plug stuff into, but the calculations are fairly tedious. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this gives you some sense how to use the method of variation of parameters to crush and destroy your differential equations problems. If you enjoy the content, support the channel, like and subscribe.